Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion related to optoelectronics devices and systems. Uh, in the previous uh, video, uh, we discussed about uh, the double refraction or bifringence method of modulation of light. So in this video, we are going to discuss about another external method of modulation of light. So as we all know, modulation is the process of changing one of the characteristic amplitude, frequency or phase of a, uh, the electric light vector, okay, the electric field vector component of the light wave. There are various methods of modulation, internal and external. We are discussing the external method of modulation of light. Uh, we have discussed the bifringence method. In this video, we are going to discuss about the electro-optic modulation. So as the name suggests, it involves application of electric field, obviously. So the electro-optic modulation, <coughs> that uh, process involves application of an external voltage and the result, resultant electric field, it affects the distribution of electrons in the material, that particular crystal. Suitable materials are uh, used for this depending upon a constant a value which is the electro-optic coefficient, we will come to that. And because of the distribution of electrons in the material which gets affected because of the presence of the external electric field, its refractive index changes. And this change of refractive index comes into, it, it brings into play the property of biofringence. Now we have discussed about biofringence which is basically different refractive index at different points in the crystal which gives rise to different velocity of the components of the incident light ray which gets splitted into various components and that brings about a change in the phase. So basically the electro optic modulation that involves application of an external voltage okay which brings about a change in the electron movement in the crystal material that brings about a change in the refractive index and when the refractive index changes the velocity of components of light that changes different components and that brings about a change in the phase or it brings a phase shift this this is the step by step breakdown of the electro optic modulation method so the basic setup of electro optic modulation it consists of this first a light source which can be a led or laser for optoelectronic communication purpose. These are the two primary optoelectronic sources. We will discuss LED laser in the upcoming videos. <coughs> then there is a polarizer. So the polarizer, uh, uh, its basic objective is to restrict the electric vectors, okay, to one plane, to bring about plane polarized light, okay. Whether it can be in a plane, you uh, know, parallel to this screen or perpendicular to the screen okay then we have the crystal material here we have used dihydrogen uh, potassium dihydrogen phosphate crystal okay kdp and across it we have connected a voltage source which produces the resultant electric field depending on the length of the crystal material so because of this, there is a change in the refractive index of the material, the crystal material. And because of that change in refractive index, 
the phenomena of bar fringes it comes into play and that produces fissure. So, how the refractive index changes with the applied voltage of the electric field? So, the variation of the refractive index because of the application of the voltage of the external electric field, it is given by this equation, okay, where the change in refractive index is here, this is R E 0 E plus P E 0 E square. So, here they are the linear and quadratic electro optic coefficient, okay. So, this portion, this much portion, this is because of an effect called as Pockel's effect and this much, this square term dependence because of this uh, quadratic electro optic coefficient P0 that is because of an effect called as Kerr effect, K-E-R-R these two effects come into play, okay. The refractive index variation, the change in refractive index is given by this Re0 which is a constant of proportionality multiplied with the electric field value plus P0 again another electro optic constant of proportionality multiplied with the square of the electric field. This first portion is called as alone is called as Pockel's effect. And the second term, square term <coughs> of the electric field, that is because of the Kerr effect, okay. This first linear term that is Pockel's effect, the second uh, square term is called as the Kerr effect. So, basically we will be discussing the Pockel's effect here. So, here because of the linear electro coefficient Re0 the change or the variation in the refractive index is given by this, this equation because of the linear coefficient, okay, Re0, okay, this Pockels, this first term, okay, this one we are talking about. So, it can be a little bit complicated to understand at first, but when you uh, go through it uh, time after time, it will you know you will understand this at first it can seem a little bit complicated but as you you know progress uh, towards it you will read it a uh, multiple number of times you will get used to it so the variation of the refractive index because of the linear electro optic coefficient the pockels uh, coefficient we can call it that is given by this equation <coughs> where the new refractive index because of the applied electric field is given by the initial refractive index eta 0 where this is the refractive index when the electric field or voltage was absent when no voltage was applied okay when no electric field no voltage was applied the refractive index of the KDP crystal whatever crystal material is used that refractive index is this the initial original refractive index. Then because of the application of the electric field, this much portion, this term comes into play, this. This is the initial, original. This is the variation which comes into play because of the electric, application of electric field or the applied voltage. So here this extra term is plus minus, it means it can get either added or subtracted. 1 by 2 initial refractive index cube Re0 which is the linear electro optic coefficient and V by L applied voltage divided by the length of the crystal material, okay, this. So this is the corresponding change in refractive index. And another interesting thing, it can happen in any of the three coordinate axes, okay, depending upon the orientation of the crystal. Uh, right now, I am not going, you know, much into that because it can unnecessarily complicate the whole discussion. Maybe in a separate video, I will bring the uh, three dimension thing into play. So, it can happen in any of the three directions, okay, x, y, or Z. 
the refractive index can change in any of the following directions okay in the three dimensional space for now you just understand this is the general equation okay uh, about the x y and z components will uh, if necessary uh, if it is required i will uh, do a separate video on it okay so this is the variation of the refractive index this is the original and this gets this extra term because of the application of this voltage this this term plus this linear electro optic coefficient it gets either added or subtracted so the resultant phase modulation that happens the phase shift which the light wave suffers okay when it is uh, detected by the photo detector or the output that phase shift phi is given by this <clears throat> 2 pi by lambda cube of the original refractive index r is 0 the linear electro optic coefficient or pockels constant or pockels coefficient and this is the applied voltage where lambda is the wavelength of the light wave okay so this is the thing which we want we know that the uh, modulation which happens okay that is we can change any of the following parameters okay sin or cos whatever omega t minus kx plus phi so here you can either change the amplitude the frequency or the phase so here phase is getting changed is getting modulated because of this phase shift so as i said the whole point of electro optic modulation is application of external voltage leading to change in the movement of electrons in the crystal then it brings about a change in the refractive index as per these relationships and that change in refractive index brings about a change in the phase phase shift because of the property of bayer fringens so here we are inducing the property of bayer fringens through the application of an external voltage okay <clears throat> so here uh, depending upon the pockels coefficient or linear electro optic coefficient r is 0 suitable materials are used so some commonly used materials for this whole setup okay this setup crystal material which are used are these kdp which is potassium dihydrogen phosphate it has a linear electro optic coefficient or pockels constant of 10.6 then this is ammonium dihydrogen phosphate adp it has a value 8.5 quartz it has a value of 0.93 lithium niobate it has a value of 30.8 Uh, lithium tantalite it has a value of 30.3 so depending upon the requirement how much phase shift we want okay how much phase shift we want we can use suitable uh, crystal materials so here the phase shift is dependent on the wavelength the refractive index original refractive index the applied voltage and the linear electro optic coefficient which depends on the crystal material so here the way in which we can bring about the uh, the change in the phase shift how we can control the phase shift it depends upon 1 2 3 4 parameters first the wavelength which we can control from the source side then the initial refractive index again depending upon the crystal material the original refractive index it depends on the type of material we are choosing the linear electro optic coefficient that depends upon the crystal material so these two parameters are dependent upon the crystal material and then we have the applied voltage again it is in our control okay so all these uh, parameters can be adjusted to bring about a change in the phase shift so this is the concept of electro optic phase modulation which brings about a change in the phase of the incoming light wave through the application of an applied voltage in an indirect way okay so voltage application causes a change in the movement of electrons electron movement change 
causes its refractive index, the refractive index of the material to change and because of a change in the refractive index, the velocity of the light wave through the crystal material it changes that brings about a change in the phase and that brings us the modulated phase, phase modulated light wave. Okay? So, this is the whole concept of electro-optic phase modulation. So, friends, I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel Engineering Tutorial for more such videos related to engineering, science and technology. Have a great day. Thank you very much.